Hi, I'm Art Kaplan. I'm at the Division of Medical Ethics at NYU Grossman School of Medicine in New York City. You know, there are a lot of things screwy with our healthcare system. Many of you watching this deal with bureaucracy, paperwork, all sorts of constraints, restraints, and requirements that sometimes make the practice of medicine or even nursing difficult. But I don't think I've seen anything screwier from a moral point of view than the system we have that allows for pre-authorization by third-party payers or insurers in order to give care to patients. It's pretty clear that a third-party payer has a conflict of interest. Simple. They don't want to spend money. Their goal as profit-making companies is to reduce what it is that they're going to authorize. And that clearly is driving how the pre-authorization process works. We're not getting a neutral review by third parties of the appropriateness of treatment recommendations or somebody saying this is the standard of care and this is what ought to happen. We're letting the people who uh, have the pocketbooks and the wallets have prior approval of what the doctor thinks is correct. That is really not the way to practice medicine. And we now have more evidence about what really is going on. A uh, nurse, excuse me, we now have more evidence about what is really going on. A doctor recently uh, interviewed ProPublica, one of the uh, new media online sites, saying that she had worked for Cigna as a reviewer, and basically the message she got from that insurer was speed it up, go fast, and basically deny, deny, deny when you're making, when she got requests. That's her words, not mine. So we get a peek under the tent of how this works. And Dr. Day is basically saying she had to leave because she just didn't feel that it was evidence driven. It was driven by concerns about who's going to lose money or make money. Look, if you want to check to see whether something is appropriate, the question becomes who ought to do prior review? Who does it now? Sometimes doctors, sometimes nurses who aren't in the specialty where the request is coming in for pre-approval. I've even seen uh, situations where some companies use nurses in other countries, like the Philippines, to do pre-approval. And they send them information, like a, a clip to use to deny things that basically is boilerplate language, whatever the request is. Looming up now, some insurers are starting to think, well, maybe artificial intelligence could do it. Just review the written request trigger certain responses on the part of uh, the artificial intelligence. They can deny the claims just as well as a human, and maybe it's even cheaper to set up that system for the insurer. This is ethically nuts. We need to have a system where doctors' judgments drive what patients get. You listen to doctors, as I do, about pre-approval access, and they say, Patients sometimes give up trying to get what they think is needed. Con continuity of care is interrupted if they have to keep making requests all the time. There are adverse events when the thing that the doctor thought was most appropriate isn't approved and something else is used that is less safe or less efficacious. It isn't in patient interest to have the person with the wallet saying, this is what we think you need and then having unqualified people or even automated intelligence with no accountability, no transparency, get involved in pre-authorization. This system costs us money as middlemen are doing all this work, and it basically becomes kind of one of the huge scandals in my view of our health system that doctors don't ultimately decide what the patient needs a pre-authorizing third party or robot without transparency, without accountability, behind closed doors, second guesses what's going on. I'm Art Kaplan at the Division of Medical Ethics at the NYU Grossman School of Medicine. Thanks for watching.